In this tutorial, I'll go through every step needed to model and render a perfume bottle. I will be demonstrating with this replica bottle, but this process can be applied to almost any bottle. Press A to select everything and X to delete. Add in a reference image to the YZ plane. Reduce the opacity. Shift A to add in a cylinder. Tab into edit mode. Then use the S key to scale. Pressing S, followed by Z, will allow you to scale the cylinder in the Z direction only. Press G and then Z to move the cylinder in the Z direction. Hold down Alt and select the top edge to select the entire top loop. Press E to extrude it up, then S to scale it to size. Then E again to extrude the lip of the bottle. This part won't really be visible, but you don't want to have a visual gap between the bottle and the lid. Tab out of edit mode and add a solidify modifier. Adjust the thickness. Apply. Tab into edit mode, press L to select the outer surface, followed by H to hide the selection. This inner part will become the liquid. Alt select the bottom edge loop. Control B to bevel. Use the scroll wheel to adjust the amount of segments. Scale the bevel in the Z direction to flatten it out a little. Now make a small bevel on each of the other edges. Press A to select. Then P to separate the selection into a new body. Now rename the bodies to stay organized. Hold Alt and press H to unhide everything. Alt select the bottom edge, Control B to bevel. Use the scroll wheel to reduce the number of segments to get a chamfered look. Now bevel the rest of the edges. Turn on wireframe view. Alt select the bottom loop. Use the E, S, and G keys to give the bottom of the bottle a bit of a concave look. Give the bottom loop a slight bevel. Tab out of edit mode. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Apply. Select the liquid object and add a subdivision surface modifier. Apply. Right click and select Shade Smooth for each object. Shift A and add in a cylinder for the lid. In edit mode, scale it with the S key and move it with the G key. Alt select the top loop, and press E followed by S to scale. Then E to extrude the edge up. Repeat this process with E, S 
and G until you have reached the top of the lid. Now Alt select each edge, and Ctrl B to bevel. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Use loop cuts to fix any edges that don't look right. Alt select this loop, press G, and pull it down so it looks like the top part of the lid is coming out of the lower part of the lid. Still in edit mode, shift A and add in another cylinder. Use the S, G, and R keys to position it where the nozzle is. Make sure the cylinder protrudes out the front end of the lid. Alt select the front edge. Press E followed by S to scale. Then, press E to extrude it back. Use loop cuts to clean up the geometry. Tab out of edit mode. Right click, and select shade smooth. Add in another cylinder for the face of the nozzle. In edit mode, adjust the scale and position of the cylinder with the S, G, and R, keys. Alt select the front loop. Press E, then S to scale a loop for the hole at the center of the nozzle. Then E again to extrude the hole back. Tab out of edit mode. Select the lid, and go back into edit mode. I forgot to add this little detail. To do so, add a loop cut in the middle and scale it up slightly. To create these loops of string around the lid, shift A to add in a torus. Set the minor radius to 0.05 meters. In edit mode, adjust the scale and position of the loop to match the highest loop. Now duplicate the loop by holding down shift and pressing D. Then press Z and drag it down a little. Repeat this process until you have about 7 loops all touching. Press A to select all of them and scale until you are happy with the position. Tab out of edit mode, right click, and shade smooth. Using the measure tool, we can see that the bottle is way too big. To fix this, mark the height you want, in my case, I chose 16 centimeters. Select everything and press S to scale it down. Now the bottle is roughly the correct size. For the background, add in a plane. In edit mode, select the back edge and extrude it up in the Z direction. Then bevel the corner so there is no clear seam. 
Shade smooth. For the label, select the bottle and tab into edit mode. Add loop cuts to mark the top and bottom edges of the label. Now select all the faces that are where the label should be. I did this by marking the corners in wireframe view, and then switched back to solid mode to select the faces. Double check that the faces that were selected match up with the label. Shift D to duplicate the selection. Then right click. Press P to separate the selection. To rename it to avoid confusion in the future. With the label selected, add a solidify modifier. Adjust the thickness. Shift A to add in an area light. Press R followed by X and then 90 to rotate the light 90 degrees on the X axis. Press minus if the light is facing the wrong direction. Now G and Y to move the light in the Y direction. S to scale. We will adjust the light settings later. Shift D to duplicate the light. Then rotate and move it so that it faces the front of the bottle. Shift A again, and add in a camera. Adjust the rotation so that the camera faces in the X direction. And position it so it faces the front of the perfume bottle. Going into the camera view shows what the camera sees. Adjust the focal length to 135 mm. To get a square render, the X and Y values must be equal. Now reposition the camera so that it frames the bottle well. Now it's time to move over to the shading tab. This is where we will create the materials and set up the final render. Set the render engine to cycles. Press Ctrl B to draw a box around the camera view. This makes Blender only render what the camera sees, and not all the surroundings. Now hide the reference image. Select the bottle, and add a new material to it. Select and delete the principal BSDF. Replace it with a glass BSDF. Now select the liquid object, and do the same thing. However, this time, change the IOR to be 1.33, and adjust the color. Keep naming everything to stay organized. Now select the lid. Add a new material. Adjust the base color to have a hex number of C0C0C0. C0, 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 and reduce the roughness to be 0.2. Bring the metallic slider all the way up. For the label, add an image texture node to the base color. Open an image of the label. To get it to show up correctly, we must UV unwrap the label. 
In edit mode, under the UV editing tab, select the entire label. Scale up the label so that it matches the image. Back in the shading tab, the label should look correct now. To give it some texture, add a displacement node to the displacement of the material output. Then a Voronoi texture to the height. Change from Euclidean to Minkowski. Set roughness to zero. Adjust the scale, I used 400. To make the lettering a bit more reflective than the rest of the label, add in a color ramp node that connects from the image node to the roughness on the principal BSDF. Then adjust the slider so that the only shiny part is the black lettering. To make this effect a little less noticeable, set the black to more of a gray. Now add a new material for the rope. Add a displacement node attached to the displacement on the material output. Then add a noise texture to the height. Adjust the parameters until you are happy. For the face of the nozzle, the only thing I did was reduce the roughness. Play around with the background material. Now adjust the power of the lights. Once you are happy with the lighting, go into the render settings. Reduce the max sample so that the render doesn't take forever. Under color management, set the look to medium high contrast. Now it is time to render. Click render. Then render image. And wait. Once the render is complete, click image and select save to save the render. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Until next time. Keep designing.